with a lot of other directors, and Josh is one of those relationships where you'll send him a piece of music, and he goes, "Yeah, man, that's great," and that, that that's it. That's all I get. Um, there, there was one funny story where he came by the studio, and he listened to a bunch of music. He goes, "Yeah, okay, all right," and he left. I said, like, "Oh no, what's what's happened?" And then I saw a tweet from him later on that says. Got my first taste of the, the great magical score from Tony Green. Oh, okay, um, now, now, I, now I know I'm all right. So once I saw that, I was fine. Man, a few words. Well, I mean, that's, I have the same problem with actors sometimes. We'll have a take, and I'm like, great job. You know, or sometimes I don't want to say anything. And that just means I'm happy, and I'm thinking about the next shot or the next step in the process. And, and they'll, be, they'll be standing there like, are we doing okay? What's happening? And, you know, who wants a validation? Yeah, I'm like, if I, if I don't tell you that something's wrong, it's good. It's all good. So how was it shooting your, your film? Um, it was, I mean, when you're, we had, obviously it's a very low budget film and when you don't have a lot of money, you have to, uh, you have to work really hard to, to make it happen. We shot it in 12 days and so we, we planned every aspect of it as much as possible. But for the most part, I think we only had one day that went 12 hours. We try to keep most of my days as a like nine to five kind of job. And it was, it was pretty smooth for the most part. Much smoother than my first feature film. You learn as you go. You do, yeah. Uh, has it already uh, been screened? Yeah, this is our, I think our 35th film festival. So we've been screening for about a year straight. We had our first screening here, here. last night. Yeah. How was it? It was fantastic. We were a packed house. And Sold out. Yeah, we had a really good good turnout. How was the Q&A? It was great. Yeah, and like I said, at Sedona, I mean, the questions we hear are very intelligent. People are very knowledgeable, knowledgeable about film and about the process of it. So it's always nice to talk to people like that. Any questions stand out that you were just like, oh, well, I mean, not really questions. To me, it's just, you know, the, the film is kind of based on my my life and my experiences going through a, a, a bad relationship and then a lot of the weird things that happened after it. And I'm always surprised that the, the people that come up to me and say that they connect with the character and, and that makes me feel a little less alone that there is other people that have gone through experiences like this. So I, I just, I enjoy that process. Yeah, and you're not alone. Well, thank you. I mean, I've learned that. I've learned that. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the Q&A, the regular thing comes up is that Josh is regularly asked if everything in the film really happens. Mm -hmm. And you're always a bit cagey about really what, yeah. what's real and what's fictional. Well, I mean, it, like, it is based on a true story and there are characters that are based on real people and I don't want to uh, you know, interrupt their lives or bring them into something that they didn't really sign up for. So there are a lot of times we don't really, I don't like to talk about certain aspects of it and what, what's true and what's not true, but it is all kind of based from a, a real, uh, real life experiences. and. Now you expand on them and you, you try to change things to make it adapted to make it work inside of a, a film, you know, right. a film for an hour and a half. But uh, yeah, for the most part, everything is weirdly true. So. <laughs> <laughs> did, um, I mean, did it turn out at the end of it, you know, after it's edited, because I always like to, it's really hard when you're behind the scenes. It takes the magic out of movies a lot, but you know, there's a director's view, there's a scriptwriter's view, there's an editor's view. Did it come out in editing the way that you wanted it to? Um, well, I, I approach it differently, I think, than some directors, whereas we use our screenplay as a blueprint. And I, the reason I do cast my films myself is because I want actors to come in that I trust, and I let them pretty much do and say whatever they want with the character. As long as we're all moving forward, we all know what the end point is. You know, I let people you know, do whatever they want with it. So it does, it, I have no idea really what's going to happen with it, but. Uh, for the most part, it's very happy accidents that happen all the time. Yeah, that's we love those. Those are the best because they show on film. When I, it's happy yeah. accident, you see it. I think so. I think it it becomes much more natural and much more realistic. And um, the, you know, when the, when an actor comes in and they really take a hold of their character, it makes your film so much better than what you could you could write about it. Yeah. Uh, so, how long have you been a composer? I mean, how many films have you composed? Well, this is my second feature, although I've done a lot of documentary work, work in TV, and a little bit of commercial work. But I've been to focus on film and TV, I think, for the last six years or so. But I've been a musician since I picked up the guitar at 13 to try to impress girls. So, <laughs> and That's what it's I always wish, about. I wish yeah, I could yeah. figure out how to make that work still. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow it does work. Amazingly. Amazingly. We'll yeah. ask your wife if she's watching right now, if it worked or not. Um, what is your next project? What do you have going on? Uh, well, I don't really have anything completely lined up. I, I have a couple projects that we're hoping to find funding for and move forward with. One is written by a guy, an actor who's in this film, Bill Redding. It's, uh, it's called Love. Uh, he's a great writer as well, and he sent me the script, and I really enjoyed it. And um, I was like, yeah, if we can make this, I'm, 
I'm all about it. And then I have a couple projects that I written myself, you know, the same same way as this one that I'm hoping to, to get going. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And what any projects in the work for you? It's gonna be a busy year. I've got about uh, four features coming up and one of which of course is the Bill and Josh has talked about love, so that'll be our third time working together. But it's gonna be a really great busy year, so it's uh, it's always looking good. good. That's a very good thing, that's right. So we might see you back next year I would love that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I'd love to come back with every every film. When we made this one, I was like, when we were looking at the film festival list, I was like, we gotta to try to get into Sedona, just because I had a great experience last time. Great, when we left hearing that, that makes us keep wanting to move forward with it. So. Uh, okay, let's open it up to the gallery and questions. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, you, you had an Indiegogo page to um, try and fund this movie, and you did get featured on IndieWire. Um, do you feel like the IndieWire spot helped um, helped attract any um, investors at all? Do you feel like the IndieWire spot has helped with like production? Like, Has there, there been anyone who's like seen the film through that channel? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, did you have to... No, IndieWire. I just, she was asking about IndieWire. So. Uh, I'm not sure if it really we brought any extra investors or anything like that, but it does help as far as get exposure. I mean, as you guys know, there's thousands of indie films out there made every year. So any chance you get to kind of get a little bit more exposure and get people to notice your film, IndieWire is great about that when you get, get noticed on there. Yeah, another question as well. Um, you mentioned that it's a bit of a road film, mm -hmm. and uh, there is, we seem to have an affinity for road films, and I just wanted to know, in your opinion, why does that, um, niche kind of hit so hard with audiences. Why do we love that so much? Why opinion? do we love road films so much in your opinion? Well, I think most people, you know, our lives are very, you know, static. We're, we're stuck in one place. So anytime you get to, to go out of your normal routine and see the world and experience new things, it becomes exciting and it becomes an adventure. And this this film is like, it's just like that. It's about a guy who gets into a bunch of, you know, weird situations that he has to deal with. And I think anytime you do that, that changes your, your normal life becomes different and exciting, so I, I, I think people are drawn to it. Vicarious learning from others' experiences. Exactly, yeah. Questions? Oh, oh, you go. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Um, what are your plans on distribution for the, the film? Distribution of the film. Maybe. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't signed anything yet, but we do have something lined up, and then it will go on, on demand, we'll be on uh, iTunes, <laughs> and, and then uh, Amazon, and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully this summer, we've really been waiting for our festival run to end, and it just keeps going and going, So, which is a nice thing. Um, and whenever that does end, probably this summer, we'll, we'll go on to, to be on demand so people who haven't caught it at a film festival will be able to, to catch it in their homes. Are you going to do another uh, f funder for the marketing then? No, but I think we, we have all the funds we need mm -hmm. at this point to, to cover all that. Oh, great. And then our, the distributor that we're talking to, they're going to help you know, pretty much do all of that process for us, which is which is nice. Well, and uh, thanks for making a, a film that's about people in real real life. Yeah. Well, thanks. Those are the films I'm attracted to. Um, yeah. I've always liked films, Ale Alexander Payne, Noah Baumbach, guys like that that make films with real people and real situations. And I haven't made anything, obviously, in the quality, I think, or the level of that yet, but that is, th those guys are my heroes, and hopefully we can keep making films. And I think each one's gotten a little bit bigger and a little bit better. And, <coughs> Same path. Well, the cast you attract it says a lot about what yes. you're doing. So, you know, I think a lot of people are when the actors read it, they were very attracted to the parts. Even like we have Tommy Beardmore is in the film; he's in the entire film. But most of the other people are were day players, or they may come in for two days. And uh, I think the, the characters all had enough meat where they could come in and make their mark on it, which is exciting for them. And that's why we were able to attract some of the, the TV people when they weren't working. You know, they came in and did this film for a day and, and had a lot of fun with it. Mm hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Ellie? Yeah, I have one more as well. With a limited budget, uh, what particular <coughs> aspects of uh, just the production or the creative process do you cling to in order to really bring that to life? Uh, when you're on a limited budget, what parts do you not uh, not let go of? I mean, it's it's very, very hard. You do have to have... You want to say music is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what you're struggling to say? It, it, it is true, though. With I, I, I talk about it all the time. With, with a film like this, if you don't have great actors and you don't have the music there to make it all work, the film doesn't work. So to me, that was those are the things that I really had to find great acting. And I knew Tony, Tony worked on Wild Blue and did a great job. I knew he had no doubts that he would do it again. So those, those things make me look much better than I am. 
<laughs> and we had an interview yesterday with a sound technician, and he talked about how important music is in yeah. movies and making uh, you know that suspension of reality happen. And music is so important in that. So I love that you cling to. It is, and, and Tony's scores are, I mean, I always say magical because they really are, but they'll just do little tiny, tiny things that are, that work perfectly within the story and within the script, and uh, just like a little, a little nudge to the audience that kind of hints in the direction where they're going, I think he's a, a master at doing that, so I, you know, I hope I get to work with him over and over and over. I feel like he should have written cue cards for Josh, but have uh, done a better job than what he just said. He wouldn't be here if I didn't like him, so. <laughs> Oh, my God.